A small group of major Hollywood players is thrust into a remote and inhospitable jungle setting to act out a tense and difficult story about the dark side of humanity. It was a high-stakes gamble, played with highly strung artists at the top of their game. It could all go very wrong. But one man held all the cards, and he always played to win. John Huston. I think it can be said without fear of much correction that The Night of the Iguana is one of John Huston's great, great achievements. John Huston was 57 when he was working on Night of the Iguana. He had already achieved, you know, a lot of his greatness. I mean, the, John, John was one of the most interesting characters that ever came out of Hollywood. They're a great adventurer, a great sportsman, and a hunter. Houston was a wonderfully established director by now. He was 20, 20 plus years into his career. He was a director who really knew all of the tricks and how to keep cast and crew and script together. Based on a major work by playwright Tennessee Williams, The Night of the Iguana was to be the 25th production of the legendary filmmaker. Houston was one of the great adapters of really wonderful literary properties. He was really fearless in taking on a work that was highly acclaimed and being able to translate it into a, into a wonderful movie. Houston had assembled a stellar cast of world-class performers, but for his players, most of whom moved in a world of glamour and luxury, Houston held out a surprise. Houston, I think perhaps more than, than any director I can think of, loved being in, not only being on location, uh, going back to Treasure of the Sierra Madre, but the most difficult, remote, hard to be place you could, come, you could come up with. The Night of the Iguana would be filmed entirely on a wildly desolate jungle peninsula on the Baja coast of Mexico. Houston loved taking people who were used to comfort and putting them in the most uncomfortable circumstances that he could. It threw them off balance and got a truer performance out of them because they couldn't rely, I think, on, on the comforts that they were used to. Houston knew that his plan came with enormous risk. Forcing such unpredictable and colorful personalities into isolation might create serious challenges for the shoot. For one, Richard Burton would not be coming alone. Richard Burton is now with Elizabeth Taylor, and they are making a lot of news because they're, they're a couple, except that Elizabeth Taylor is still married to Eddie Fisher. So there's going to be a lot of brouhaha about that. Elizabeth Taylor was certainly present during most, if not all, of the production of Night of the Iguana, and I'm sure without intending to be so, she was, shall we say, a distraction. I mean, it's not just the girlfriend of the leading man. It's Cleopatra, come to town with her entourage. And her presence alone, and their presence together in this rather primitive backwater on the Mexican coast caused, of course, a, a, a platoon of paparazzi to arrive with their cameras and uh, reporters. This is not the best circumstance when you're shooting a serious and difficult film in a difficult physical setting. It's almost as if you're taking a, 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 tr a truckload of, of fireworks to the match factory. All you can expect is there going to be some kind of pyrotechnics that come out of this. Houston knew he had set up a potentially explosive situation and so decided the best way to defuse it was to play a little joke. The world was expecting fireworks to come out of this, and jealousies and, and anger and fights. And so he had little gold-plated derringers made for, for everybody. We love it. And all of the, the, the main actors were given bullets with the name of the other actors on them. So when they wanted to kill somebody, they could put that person's bullet, name the bullet, and go and kill him. You know, this is, you know, and the cast all found it very amusing. The cast loved it, and this very provocative act in its own way, of course, was a wonderful way to diffuse something. It was so over the top and so hysterical that it really kind of blew up the notion of wanting to go blow up the other person. Houston was remarkable in the way he could keep control on a set, because on the one hand, he, he was volatile by nature. 
Yet at the same time, he was able to take these volatile personalities and somehow keep them contained. He was a great seducer. All you had to do was listen to his voice or see a picture of him. You could realize what skills he had in dealing, in dealing with people and how well he understood human nature, both the dark side especially, but also the light side. So far as directing the actors and the crew is concerned, well, I direct just as little as possible. And I get as much from others as I possibly can. Houston demonstrated his skills in the delicate way he handled the nervous Ava Gardner. Ava Gardner never knew much about her talent, I think, and she just uh, was always a little bit nervous about performing. And, and yet she was a wild woman. So, you know, she, she has so this kind of, that kind of a dichotomy. John was the kind of director who didn't direct too much. He liked actors to discover their parts themselves and then come back and show them what, what they've got. And it was through John Huston's encouragement and guidance. I mean, she just turned in a wonderful performance that is raucous and slatternly when that was appropriate. And it's a deeply touching performance. And we see that inside this rough rhinestone, there's a bit of a diamond. Houston worked tirelessly to keep his performers on track and his company in order. The potential for more off-screen drama arose with the arrival of playwright Tennessee Williams. While another director might have resented Williams' presence, Houston welcomed the writer and enlisted his aid in fixing an important scene between Shannon and Charlotte that just wasn't working. He asked Tennessee Williams, says, you know, about it. He says, made, you know, give us, give us some thought. What else can you do? And Tennessee Williams left and came back the next day with what John thought was genius. Sue Lyon, who's out to seduce Richard Burton, and Richard Burton, who's doing everything he can not to be seduced by Sue Lyon as much as he wants her because this is his last chance. Toll the bell for lovely Nell. My dark Virginie bride. In the intensity of the scene, he drops a glass and it shatters on the floor and he is so caught up in his dilemma that he's actually walking on this broken glass and is, and is unaware of it. Uh, and he's cutting his feet. And this is all very kind of Christ-like. And so even with that, with very little dialogue involved, uh, he made this scene memorable. And this was why John felt it was important to have Tennessee Williams around because he could do that. During the making of Night of the Iguana, President Kennedy was shot in Dallas. And John, John really admired Kennedy. He just had a sense that, that America was going the wrong way and Kennedy was like kind of this bright and shining light. And when this happened, it just was devastating. And they, it happened during lunchtime really when they were told. And so they all discussed it and what they were going to do and should they, you know, not film. But it was so overwhelming that, you know, John thought maybe it's better to film. Maybe we just if we work, well, you know, we won't have to think about it for a little while. And that's what happened. John also made a decision to give up his American citizenship right after this because uh, he just, you know, got, was very disheartened. Miraculously, production on the Night of the Iguana wrapped on November 30th, 1963. And at the festive wrap party, everyone breathed a sigh of relief that the only fireworks to have occurred were those in the sky above. One of the great things about Houston was, is he, in another life perhaps he wanted to be a lion tamer, somebody who got into the cage with all the animals in the chair, because that's what he was able to do on this set. For all of his toughness, he was really able to take very difficult characters, very egocentric characters, people with explosive personalities, and mold them in a way that it, the, the, the fireworks never quite went off. If it was a cartoon, there would be the fuse and the, you know, all the sparks coming along. It would be burning and burning, and the TNT is sitting here. And just before it happened, you know, you pull, you pull it out, and that's what he was so. That's what he was so great at doing. This film turned out to be a perfect record of a magnificent play, and then it is unashamed to be a meditation on human need, and human frailty, and enduring a dark night and. All we have in this dark night, uh, by God's grace, uh, the great thing we have is one another.